Hey guys, welcome back to the AWS Cloud Demos. Uh, my name is Murli and I am a AWS Solution Architect. So in today's demo, we will look into how we deploy a highly available web application and a bash and host in the uh, AWS. So what is bash and host? Um, bash and host is a uh, computer that acts like a proxy server and that allows the client machine to connect to the remote server, right? So for example, bash and host is the only server that is exposed to the internet and should be highly protective to the malicious attacks so uh, what is high availability so consider your application is running on a single ec2 instance if the traffic to your application increases and you need to further you need further resources right so we can launch multiple ec2 instances from an already running server and then use the elastic load balancer to distribute the traffic to your application among the newly created servers, all right? So uh, we can also eliminate the fault tolerance in your application by placing the server's EC2 instances across different availability zones, all right? So in the event of failure uh, of one availability zone, your application will serve or handle the traffic from another availability zone. So high availability and fault tolerance can be achieved using elastic load balancers. All right, so we, in this demo, we will also create a lo uh, load balancer. So first we will create our own VPC. We will use the template that you are seeing here on my screen. I will attach these links in the description box below. So I'm using the CloudFormation VPC template to quickly spin up a VPC with a public, with a two public subnets and uh, with a two private uh, subnets. And we will be launching our EC2 instances in these subnets. All right, um, so, uh, and also it creates internet gateway, route tables, um, and, uh, um, and add gateways and, and stuff like that okay uh, so if you're not familiar with vpc i highly recommend um go and uh, watch uh, understand a bit more about vpc before uh, coming to this demo this uh, demo is a bit advanced so i want you to i want you guys to uh, know more about vpc before trying this demo okay um so i will tr i will try and do more videos on vpc uh, going forward but for now uh, i would like to continue uh, with this cloud formation template to uh, you know to create the uh, vpc and then we will host our EC2 instances inside that. So let's go ahead and copy this um, template and uh, go to your AWS console. Uh, so I've already logged into my console, all right? Um, I have also attached uh, the servers that you want to create. Uh, so what we're gonna do, first copy the template and uh, and paste it in the CloudFormation template, okay? So go to your console and open up uh, CloudFormation like so um, and let's import the let's create a stack okay go and click on stack create stack here and template is ready uh, and i'm going to use use upload a template file choose file uh, so i have already created a yaml file vpc uh, which which is uh, the same content that uh, you have seen in uh, in this window all right um, so come back to the uh, cloud formation stack and go ahead and uh, once you choose the file go ahead and click on next um or i do i want to show you something so if you go to previous right uh, you can see this uh, cloud formation template in the designer um like so um you, you will see what's going on here um what we are trying to do uh, basically uh, is So you can see um, we are creating a public route table private route table we are creating a um we're creating a private route table. We, we're creating a, a VPC, which has a no ingress security group, um, which will uh, not allow any incoming connections. Um, and then we have created an uh, internet gateway. And then uh, we have also created NAT gateways um, and private subnets and public subnets. As you can see on the right side, uh, this is my pa private public subnet and this is my private subnet. Um, and uh, that's how I'm gonna create uh, my stack for today. Okay, uh, now go ahead and uh, click on this create stack uh, upload icon uh, or maybe you can close this and go back to the um, previous window. So let's go back to the previous window for now um, and uh, leave this page. Um, create stack. We will use this UI um, and you upload a template, choose file and select the vpc.yaml file and open it and click on next then you should be able to see something like this um where it says the your ciders um cider blocks which is uh which which is of this range that i've created for public subnet and pub private subnet uh and then uh, i have public subnet and private subnet uh, i have two subnets right uh, and then i have my uh, vpc cider all right um so for this uh environment name i'm gonna give as bash and host um this is my bash and host vpc um okay, 
pass and host uh, and I'm going to click on next so I don't want any tag I don't want anything to change here so click on next and then come back in here and then you will see uh, the review in the review screen you will see the environment name and all your ciders and once it is done go back to and go go to um, and submit all right um, so now that uh, you have uh, created your stack it, it takes a while and takes some time to create your VPC and you, as you can see that um, uh, the create in progress uh, it might take some time so what I'm gonna do in the meanwhile I um, so the template that we have used right um, which will uh, with a, uh, which will create a pair of public and private subnets and spread across multiple uh, uh, two availability zones in our case it deploys the internet gateway with a default route and the public subnets all right and so it deploys a pair of uh, NAT gateways uh, and and default routes um, for them in the private subnets all right I hope this is clear uh, and we have created our stack let's go to resources and check if uh, everything is done um, there are a couple of other resources which needs to be finished um, so meantime what I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna spin up a bash and host uh, server okay meantime uh, so go to EC2 and open up so let's click on launch instance I'm gonna name this as passion passion host okay choose this uh, Linux and I'm choosing Linux and um, and I'm also selecting uh, t2 micro basically these are default so you don't need to do anything over here so it's just t2 micro and then come down here and I'm gonna create a key pair name which is passion host um, passion host key and then let's go ahead and create the key so I have created a bash and host key um, as you can see uh, and then we will go to network settings and then click on edit and here uh, as soon as your VPC uh, is done creating uh, then you should be able to see your VPC over here um, bash and host VPC um, select the bash and host VPC because we want to deploy a highly available bash and host I'm, I'm choosing my own VPC and then uh, I'm gonna choose a public subnet um, AZ1 you can see public subnet AZ1 AZ2 private subnet AZ1 AZ2 you can see uh, our subnets has been created so what I'm gonna do select the public subnet AZ1 uh, as shown here and then uh, also enable the auto assign public IP and uh, let's go ahead and create a new uh, create a new security group which is bastion host security group and just copy this name and just put it over here like so and then um, allow from anywhere um, SSH because we will be connecting to our bastion host from anywhere uh, but we will not give any access to our private uh, subnets okay we will only give access to a public bash and host a security group so um, as soon as you create this right uh, go ahead and leave the rest of uh, options and le leave the rest of um, details unselected and then go ahead and click on launch instance and now if you go to view all instances so there you go uh, we have our bash and host which is running uh, at the moment um, so we have successfully created our bash and host and then um, we will also create a uh, security group for our, for our uh, load balancer all right um, so go ahead and go open up uh, security groups on the left side uh, if you are still in the EC2 uh, window and now we will go and create a security group and then I'm going to name this as passion sorry we are creating a load balancer security group and then we will also enter some description security group for the load balancer and just remove the default VPC and select the one that we have created which is passion host VPC in our case all right uh, and then go ahead and add the inbound rules which is HTTP so we will allow um, uh, the HTTP on port 80 from anywhere all right um, 
so what are we trying to do here uh, the load balancer we are, uh, the, the our load balancer can be accessed uh, from anywhere like on http port um on, on port 80 uh, so this is basic http um so i hope this gives you an idea and uh, we will leave the outbound rules uh, we, we will not touch anything on outbound rules all right so go ahead and click on create security group like so and then we will see that uh, our security group has been created all right um so now that we have created our uh, load balancer security group what we will be doing now is we will create a two web servers okay uh, and then we will uh, um, uh, launch uh, the ec2 instance with some um, default uh, scripts okay which will spin up a basic 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 http server all right um so now go to your instances click on instances and launch instances and now we will be creating a web server a okay this is our web server a and then we will choose amazon linux linux uh, and we will choose t2 micro and we will also create a key pair which is create a new pair so private web server key okay this is my server key and uh, remember this remember this name uh, private web server key and we will come down and click on edit network settings and we will choose our vpc bash and host vpc um, choose the make sure you choose the correct vpc and also the correct uh, subnet which is private subnet one uh, az1 which is correct in our case bash and host vpc private subnet az1 all right and then we will uh, the auto, uh, auto assign public ip is disabled by default because you are creating a private instance all right uh, because you have chosen the private subnet and uh, um, you will create a new security group here um, all right which is web server security group copy this name and just paste it over here web server security web server security group created okay uh, and then uh, we will also add a couple of rules here um, so we will remove the default rule and we will add the security group uh, which is ssh and then we will use the bash and host remember we we will only collect we will only connect uh, to our private security groups from a private uh, security in pr private ec2 instances from the bash and host so we will only connect it from the bash and host we will not connect it from anywhere else all right um so now that i have enabled a security group um uh, on my ssh and also let's go ahead and also add the um another security group rule which is http on this is from uh, you remember we have created a load balancer security group so this is where we are going to connect um our ec2 instance so we will allow access on http port to our private instance the uh, to uh, only from our load balancer so whenever you request a, uh, uh, whenever your load balancer uh, try to access your application using the load balancer dns name then uh, you should be able to access um, the web servers um, from your uh, uh, private ec2 instances right um, so for that reason i'm going to select load balancer security group and uh, this looks good and go ahead and uh, uh, copy the private server one so i have uh, the private i've created a private server one uh, which is uh, quickly starting up a HTTP server and uh, I'm just giving a sample uh, index.html file with this content um, so that you know whenever you open up your application load balancer uh, DNS name in your uh, browser then you will see the uh, response from server 1 okay and we will also create server 2 shortly so let's copy the server 1 for now and go back to the EC2 console um so now that you have selected your security group which is fine come down and click on the advanced details like so and if you scroll all the way to the bottom just copy paste it so you will see a sample uh, server will be created for our application and this looks good and go ahead and launch instance now that we have created our instance uh, we will go and uh, click on view all instance and let's go ahead and launch another instance which is web server a Sorry, web server B. So we have already created web server A. We have we are now trying to create a web server B. Um, so we have created a T2 micro and we will select the key pair 
we will select the key pair which is uh, you remember we have created something called private web key um, so this is what I'm going to select private web key um, and then also we have created a security group and go ahead and click on edit on the network settings and we, don't forget to choose the VPC make sure you choose the correct VPC otherwise uh, you will create you will try and access resources which are created outside your VPC okay which will fail so um, now that I have selected uh, my VPC bash and host VPC and now I'm going to um, choose a private subnet 2 which is this one private subnet az2 bash and host vpc private subnet az2 select the correct private subnet and this will be disabled because you cannot access it from the outside world and then uh, we will also try and uh, select the existing security group and we will choose the so what what have we created we have created a web server sg right uh, which is web server security group this is what we have created uh, in the previous lecture in the in the previous uh, um, web server a so as soon as you select this web server uh, a security group and then you're good if you go all the way to the bottom go ahead and add the advanced details of the user data let's go ahead and copy the private server too and just copy this and paste it okay so we are doing the same thing we are spinning up another server uh, uh, where, which is um, which has a content like response from server 2 and we have created a index.html file and that's simple it is all right um, and we will launch an instance so now that we have uh, launched our instance okay um, so we now have um, okay let's do uh, running instances and we can see our running instances um, are passion host web server a and shortly it will be web server b as well because we have just created a web server b all right so now that you have created all your instances which is great um, and um, i will uh, so if you select the web server a right uh, and pull this up so you can see there is no public ip address here and you can only uh, these instances only has the private ip address so only bash and host can connect to these instances all right and also uh, the bash and host uh, which can be connected from the outside world which has a private ip address we will do it shortly all right um so you're done um and and just refresh the page and you will see web server b as well uh, web server a we have created our two private servers and we have created our bash and host so now um what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to my uh, console and i'm going to open up uh, ec2 again in this window so i'm going to create a target group because we are trying to create a load balancer all right um so if i open up this window right um go to target groups click on create target group instances select instances and name this target group something like web application target group you can keep this name as short as possible uh, for you uh, but i'm going to choose my vpc uh bash and host vpc and http1 uh, i'm going to do i'm going to give a health check path index.html and then if i scroll all the way to the bottom do i have anything to set in advanced health checks uh, okay so a healthy threshold is just three uh, we have three inst uh, uh, just three instances and three consecutive checks three consecutive health checks and then we will have um unhealthy threshold of two i think you can leave this default and i have a timer of five an interval um i'm gonna choose something smaller which is six and i think that looks good go ahead and click on next now that i can see all my servers here i'm going to select web server a web server b and include as pending um, you can see this uh, servers uh, targets and then go ahead and click on target group so now that you have created a target group um, so when you click on this target group right you can see our servers are still unused um, so uh, after some time you will see that our servers are healthy because um, our servers are running in the background as you can see here right um, all right so we have created a target group which is great and now what uh, what is the next step 
So we will create a load balancer because um, we want our servers to be accessed by the load balancer because uh, as we said, we want to create a highly available um, Bastion host and highly available web application using a Bastion, Bastion host, right? Um, so let's go ahead and click on create load balancer. We have our application load balancer. Make sure you check the uh, create the application load balancer. So I'm gonna name this uh, load balancer as web application, web app load balancer. I'm just gonna uh, say load balancer to keep it short and then uh, select internet facing leave these defaults and select make sure you always select your uh, VPC that you have created because you are creating resources inside your VPC so select the bash and host VPC and also select these availability zones uh, that we have created um, so as soon as you finish your network mapping go ahead and also choose the security group uh, you remember we have created a load balancer security group uh, load balancer security group which will allow a http um, on your uh, uh, on your uh, application load balancer so now if you come down uh, in the listener http at we have um, created our web application target group go ahead and select it if you don't see this just hit refresh and you should be able to see the web application target group okay um so now that um, whatever uh, request that comes uh, to my load balancer, right? And uh, uh, my load balancer will make sure that redirects to the target group and the target group has a two private instances which has access. Um, so, um, and, and let's go ahead and uh, um, I don't want any uh, AWS global accelerator. So go ahead uh, to the bottom and you can see uh, basic configuration, security groups, network mapping, and listeners and look everything looks good go ahead and click create a load balancer like so so to provision this load balancer right it takes uh, a couple of minutes um so what we can do in the meantime is uh, we will try and connect to our uh, bash and host all right um in the using the uh, ssh so how do you connect to your bash and host uh, so this is my bash and host and go ahead and um, uh, click on connect select the bash and host and click on connect so as you can see uh, click on ssh client because that's what I, i'm going to use i'm using mac by the way uh, so you can uh, go ahead and use uh, uh, follow the steps that uh, needs to be followed for windows laptop uh, i'm using mac so what i'm going to do i'm simply copy these commands and uh, try and run in my uh, uh, terminal application okay so i'm going to open up uh, item um, So I have my window open here. So I'm gonna close the other one. Okay, so this is much better. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the uh, command, which is chmod 400. Basically, we are giving permissions to this bash and host um, uh, file, okay, private file. So uh, I'm gonna just paste the command because I have downloaded uh, to my downloads folder uh, and just run this command so that now you have given permissions to your bash and host key.m file. So now go ahead and copy the um, SSH command, uh, which basically connects to my bash and host um, uh, with the user EC2 user. All right. So go ahead and run uh, and type yes. Uh, you should be able to connect to your bash and host like so. So now that you have created your bash and host, um, uh, you can also connect to your private instances uh, from your bash and host. Okay. Um, uh, we will see how we will connect to the bash and host. Okay, so do we have any files here? No, we don't have any files here So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a uh, file called um, I'm using vi editor. Uh, I'm using vi uh, and then web server key dot m file so I've created a web server uh, and now if I go back to my instances, right? Um, so web server um, let's say we want to connect to the web server a okay so now if you go back to uh, if I go and copy the private address I can easily connect to my web server a so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna click on connect so I want to make sure that I have a correct uh, private web server key dot pem file uh, you remember we have downloaded the private web server key all right and uh, so now I'm here um, I'm gonna you I'm gonna open up uh, in my downloads folder uh, and then just give me a minute um, so go ahead and open up your uh, private server key dot uh, pem file and copy the contents in it so I've just copied the content I'm gonna just paste it over here and then uh, type 
colon w q and then this one uh, and just hit enter so that you you should be able to save uh, your file basically uh, we are trying to create a security uh, key um and copy and paste the content that we have previously downloaded okay so now that we have uh, downloaded this uh it's we are ready to go and connect to the private ec2 instance so remember we have to give uh, a permission uh to mod 400 uh web server key so we have now given permission um so what i'm gonna do is um i'm gonna copy this uh, ec2 user um so let's do ssh minus i and then web server key ec2 server at 10 192 okay so we have now we, we want to connect to our private web server from our bash and host um, right so we have already connected to our bash and host uh, as you have seen now we are trying to connect to our uh, private ec2 uh, instance all right um so now let's hit enter and type yes so permission denied um permanently added uh, to the list of known hosts uh, okay, so we are getting some permission denied error. Maybe it is to do something with the um, Okay, let's try again uh, permission denied public API key uh, I think I will leave this to uh, leave this task to you. Um, so just find out what is going on uh, with your uh, EC2 uh, public uh, bash and host um, connecting to your private instance. Um, so I'm going to resolve it uh, in my own time. Uh, but I will leave this to you uh, and let me know in the comment section below. Uh, have you resolved this or not? But um, let's go back uh, to our EC2 console. Um, and if I go to my load balancers previously, so let's refresh this page. Let's see if the OK, so now my load balancer is actually Active, click on web alb so now that um, uh, the listener is ready uh, and also my target group let's go ahead and check the health of my ec2 instances click on target group and select the target group um, so okay click on this and you should be able to see um, our server should be healthy yeah as you can see now our servers are healthy uh, and uh, go back to the load balancer Click on load balancer and copy the DNS name, like I said. Um, so open a new tab, paste it, and enter. So there you go. You now see the uh, you now see the response from our server one, right? Um, and now hit refresh a couple of times. You should be able to see the response from server two as well. As there you go. So now you are able to see the response from server A, server B. All right. Uh, just hit refresh, and you should be able to see our uh, response. Okay. Um, so now that we have created a highly available um, web application so now that uh, if there is any uh, demand for your web application you keep spinning up your servers and keep, keep uh, increasing your capacity uh, and spread across multiple availability zones in your own vpc so which is great uh, so this is uh, how we create a bashing host and a highly available uh, web application all right um, and also uh, what i want to say uh, is um, if you go back to in, in your instances, right? Um, so go back to this instance and we will stop uh, the uh, private instance. Remember, this is a private instance, um, private web server A. Okay, um, I'm gonna select the instance state and stop instance. Okay, stop the instance. And it takes a while, it takes a uh, couple of minutes and just now go ahead and go back to your uh, web application dns and click refresh so you should only see the response from um i'm hitting refresh on my keyboard with command r uh, so i can see the response from server 2 uh, we don't see a response from server 1 because we have stopped the server all right that's it guys uh, and uh, uh, we can also do some um, activity on uh, we can do some cleanup activity now uh, if you would like um, so i'm going to do it on my own so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to search box and type uh, cloud formation okay so this is what uh, we have used to create our vpc so select the bash and host and delete the stack click on delete stack so it will take a couple of uh, minutes uh, to delete the uh, if you go to your um, stack which is bash and host and select the resources and you can see the delete is in progress um, so you should be able to delete all your resources uh, with just one click okay how 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 nice it is right um, and now go back to the target group so let's delete our target group as well 
um, select the target group and now actions delete yes delete my target group uh, okay so this is basically because uh, my listener rule is uh, still listening so that's why you are not able to delete your target group so what I'm gonna do is EC2 instances and open up our uh, instances like so okay select our instances and stop the instance okay and we will stop these instances so our instances will be stopped in a minute or so and go back to the other window um, listener click on listener delete listener confirm click delete all right um, and now go back to target group select the target group actions delete yes delete all right and now go back to the load balancer select the load balancer actions delete load balancer and just confirm and then delete it's it's that easy guys it's that easy okay um so now you have create closed uh create cancelled uh, your target groups create uh, closed your load balancer and then uh, let's go to uh, security groups. Uh, we have created a web security batch and host, and we have created a load balancer as well. Click actions and go down, click on delete. Um, okay, so there is still pending. What we're gonna do is go back to the EEC2 management console, click on cloud formation. Let's see if our uh, VPC has been shut down or not. Um, click on batch and host resources. It is still in progress um, so let's give a second uh, let's finish the delete in progress okay um, and I see uh, it's still taking time to delete uh, the resources so I will um, leave this at this point and go back to my AC2 and uh, click on instances or maybe go to security groups um, so refresh so let's go ahead and select this web server security group let's see if we can delete one by one uh, i'm not sure what's going on and uh, two network interfaces attached i think it takes some time um, for you to you know um, because you have created a um, uh, the private subnet is not yet um, uh, shut down so what, uh, it will take some time for you to uh, you know uh, delete these uh, security groups and make sure you delete the uh, security groups um, and uh, we have uh, we have uh, deleted our stack cloud formation stack we have deleted our target groups load balancer and private and we have stopped and or uh, go ahead and terminate your ec2 private uh, ec2 instances and also your bash and host and that's it uh, and i think you're good um you're done with the cleanup activity um so yeah thank you so much guys um and if you like this video please like it share it and sub subscribe to my channel i will try and do more uh, um about these kind of architectures uh, going forward in the aws so um thank you so much uh, and please don't forget to like or share or subscribe yeah thank you and i will see you guys in the next video